dear colleagues, dear participants, dear researchers in open science, dear all who want to become a practitioner in open science, I would like to welcome you at the 10th Open Science Conference. This conference was prepared by the Strategic um, Forum Open Science of the Leibniz Association. The Leibniz Association is one of the four extra university research organizations we have in Germany. It comprises 97 institutes, scientific institutes, which conduct knowledge-driven, application-driven research, and several of these institutes are um, um, offering research infrastructures, like, for example, my own institute, the ZBW. At this point, I would like to thank the uh, Leibniz Association for their financial support for the organization of this year's conference. Thank you very much to the Leibniz Association. Let us look back to the beginnings of the conference. In 2014, we hosted the first meeting. At that time, it took place in Hamburg as an on-site event in presence. And at that time, still under the name Science 2.0. And the initial focus of the conference series was on the participatory web. We investigated how does the participatory web is changing research and publication processes. At that time, we I, uh, observed that more and more scientific outcomes were published in scientific blogs, scientific wikis, that more and more scientific communication took place in social media channels, like for example on Twitter. In 2015, Carlos Moedas, the former European Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation, introduced his three O's. Open innovation, open to the world and open science. In his speech, he argued that the European Commission was preparing a call for a European science cloud in order to identify the possibility for creating a cloud for Europe's scientists. In his speech, and I cite now, he said, we need more open access to research results and underlying data. Open access publications is already a requirement under Horizon 2020, but we now need to look seriously at open data. Today, open science does not only include publications and data, but all scientific outputs. This includes, for example, open educational resources, open software, it includes open methodologies, open peer review, and also open practices in scientific work processes. To reflect this development, we gave the Science 2.0 conference a new name. As you have already seen in the video at the beginning of the conference, the new name since 2017 has been Open Science Conference. And at that time, the Open Science Conference was the first European conference on this important topic. The first topics we addressed uh, during the conferences um, uh, were uh, related to the European Science Cloud, which today, almost 10 years later, is referred to as the European Open Science Cloud. That is a really very high priority activity here in Europe. The European Commission is providing 500 million euros in its framework programs. And these 500 million euros are matched with 500 million in-kind contributions from the member states. And just these figures show and underline the significance of open science. In 2017 and 2018, frankly, there was little to report on open science practices. So at least two, or I think also three uh, conferences had a strong focus on science policy. But gradually, such practices came to be used in science. The first examples I remember um, uh, were registered reports, which are still in use, or credit, the uh, taxonomy for authorship attributions, or proposals for the consideration of open science contributions in appointment committees for professors. In addition to the scientific contributions, there was another key milestone in the development of the open science movement, and these were the UNESCO recommendations on open science adopted in 2021. These recommendations uh, provide an international framework for open science policy and practice that recognizes not only disciplinary differences, but also regional differences. So for the very first time, knowledge equity 
became an important issue in the open science movement. And all these developments had led to the fact that today there is a huge number of open science conferences. Some of them are thematically or uh, scientifically oriented. Others focus primarily on practices in their program, regardless of a specific discipline. Open science meetings are hosted by different types of organizations. For example, the United Nations is running an open science conference. The International Science Council runs an open science conference. And in September this year, under the Spanish presidency of the Council of the European Union, Spain will host the Open Science Fair 2023. And apart from these rather top-down events, there are numerous events um, uh, organized bottom-up workshops, bar camps, retreats. One example of uh, such a retreat, of such a community event, is our own open science uh, retreat organized by the ZBW. At these events, we uh, meet with experts in the fields for two half days to discuss in depth um, specific topics like, for example, open science in the context of global crises, for example, in the context of the corona pandemic, or in the context of the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. Most recently, we focused on the topic of uh, the reform of research assessment, and this topic will also be addressed in the closing panel on Thursday. We as organizers do not consider the increasing number of open science events in any way as a competition to our meeting. Rather, we are pleased, we are glad that open science is so widely accepted and is on its way to become the new normal. Looking at this year's program of the conference, it is clear how much progress we are making towards the new normal. Presentations address topics such as open science indicators. We want to get rid of the like quantitative indicators, for example, like the H index. It addresses topics like student education in open science or teaching open science. Here we want to reach out to the next generation of researchers, young students, and want to make them familiar with open practices at a very early stage of their scientific career. Workshops address issues related to FAIR and open data training, so we want to build up capacities in open science. Uh, they are related to software management plans and how these can advance open science, or they relate to the integration of open science practices into teaching again, reaching out to the next generation of scientists. And finally, the program features an exciting panel on Thursday on the reform of research assessment. In this panel, we will discuss the appropriate integration of open practices in research evaluation. We know this conference program is extremely diverse, and I hope that you will find topics that appeal to you personally, and we hope that you can further develop your own expertise in the field. Enjoy the next three days with us. Have fun with the 10th Open Science Conference. Thank you very much.